Robots Radio presents The Omega Broadcast, a Fallout story. decided to finally wake up. Welcome to our home, outsider. Looks like we need to have a little talk. Where? Where am I? And who the hell are you? There will be plenty of time for questions, outsider. But for now, it's best you keep quiet. You just walk with me now. Everyone, gather round. In this moment, We have an opportunity. We have the ability and obligation to uphold our responsibility and rid this world of heretics. To purge this land of the filth and vile that only seeks to destroy us. Some might say we are extreme in our actions. Some might even say we contradict ourselves. But I say it's only relevant to be extreme, and sometimes contradictions will they bring out the truth. Kneeling before you right now is a man. A man that has taken a stance against our way of living. A man that believes good-natured and kind-hearted people like yourselves are nothing more than a ruse. A threat to lure people into some kind of trap. What are you talking about? I'm just a wanderer, a a traveler. I've never said or done anything. Quiet, you. I would not have you spewing your ignorance and lies into the ears of my people. You, just like so many others before, have traveled and wandered through our land with only one thing in your mind. Chaos. Good people of Eden, listen as I speak. I have made a vow from the beginning. From the moment the first strangler heart was born, we will not and we shall not allow chaos. Our scriptures speak very clearly about chaos. Listen, children, as I read from the book of Salivar. Chaos was bestowed upon us. We opened our doors to kindness and we offered our home to the outsider. But chaos was bestowed upon us. The outsider laid waste to the ones before. In chaos they drew blood, but in blood we saw the truth's beginning. We saw the heart. The heart created to strangle out chaos. The heart in which we become many. Because we are the keepers of existence. We are many. We are many. Beautiful people of Eden, we have seen these types of men before. We offered our kindness, we offered our help, and in that offering, they brought their chaos and they brought bloodshed. But there is a greatness within their misdeeds, a kind of light within their darkness. It is because of their chaos that we were given this beautiful land, this land that they call the Maya. 
we were given back the Garden of Eden. And we must keep her. We must see that she grows. We must keep her existence. So, as I have said many, many times before, and as the scriptures guide us, we must feed our land with the blood of the outsider. What? Please, don't kill me. Please, just let me go. I could be a warning to all uh, to leave you alone. Uh, I could be a voice of reason. Please, please don't kill me. Oh, outsider. I'm not killing you. No, sir. I'm rebirthing you. Please, please don't. May your old body feed the ground and you become reborn into the vine. Children of Eden, deliver this man to the heart. See that he is reborn into her bosom. Now back to you, other outsider. How about we have that talk now? Come, follow me into my tent. Well now, outsider, I know your mind must be riddled with a million questions. But first, let me take a moment and introduce myself. My name, well, you can call me Bishop. I'm the leader around here. All those people you see out there, the children of Eden, you can call us the missionaries. And I do so apologize for my lack of hospitality lately. Normally, I don't allow myself a new face into Eden without a formal introduction. But that ceremony, that sermon, and that service was a necessity. And I thought it rather important that you see it. That that was no ceremony or, or sermon or service. That... That was an execution. Oh, no, outsider. Why must we always see things as primitive and brutal? No. That was a rebirthing service. Now, I do so hate informalities. So tell me, outsider, what is your name? My name is Brian. Brian Burton. Ah, oh, yes. I know this name. You are the one we hear over the radio at night. You're the one from that place. What's it called again? Oh, yes. Omega. Well, this is a rather interesting situation that we have here. Well then, Brian from Omega, would you like a drink or something to eat, perhaps? You must be tired, after all. It has been three days since my people recovered you. Three days? Are you serious? You mean, I've been out for three days? <laughs> Why, yes. It is a bit of a long journey out here. And the sedatives that we craft here are extremely, how should I say this, effective. Now please, sit at my table, eat, drink, refill yourself. Oh man, let me get this straight. So you're the ones that hijacked my broadcast the other day. I don't, I, I don't know what to say. I, 
I really can't stay here, sir. If you don't mind, I would like to leave, but from what I saw earlier, I don't think you're going to let me go anytime soon, are you? You are a very perceptive young man. You're right to say that you will not be leaving anytime soon, but if you're worried about us rebirthing you, please remove that notion from your mind. I only want to understand you better. You see, I've heard your broadcast. You play them on loops in the evening hours. I know your story. You and I are a lot more alike than you realize. The only problem is, you do not see the truth. How... How are we anything alike? I mean, really, I, I don't understand that at all. You were once what these outsiders like to call a vault dweller, weren't you? Yeah, I, I was in Vault 76. I, too, am from a vault as well. Actually, many of the people that you saw in this camp were from a vault. But I've never seen any of you before. I, I don't know how you could be from my vault. Yes, that would be the case. We were all in a different vault. You see, our vault was Vault 94. Honestly, I didn't even know there were other vaults out here in West Virginia. I mean, I do remember when I was in school, people from Vault Tech came and talked about vaults, but I always assumed there were only a few vaults in other states. Yes, there are multiple vaults all over the United States, and West Virginia had many as well. And ours, Vault 94, just like yours, Vault 76, we're just a few of many. Okay. This is really starting to mess with my head. After the doors to my vault opened, everyone from there just scattered across Appalachia. I mean, I've seen a few people around from Vault 76. I've had a few even come through and buy things at my settlement, but... Everyone, for the most part, just scattered. So I guess my question to you is, how and why did you all stay together? Well, the history of our vault has taken a long time for me to transcribe. You see, there are only a handful of us here, originally from Vault 94. The rest are just converts that have seen the truth or children born from our people. But you said you were all from Vault 94. Yes, for the most part, we are all descendants of Vault 94. There were only a few of us that made it out alive. Alive? Yes. I don't understand. This is what I meant when I said our only difference is you not seeing the truth. I will tell you the story from our scriptures, but first, you need to eat, and I will not ask again. If you decide not to replenish yourself, that is a burden you will carry. Once the food is gone, I will not make the offer again. Okay, okay. I'll eat. Very good. Very good. Lily. Yes, Father? Come set the table. Our guest requires food. Right away. This is my daughter, Lily. She will take care of your food requests. Anything you need, just tell her. 
Hi. I have some lemonade and roasted Brahmin. Would that be okay? Um, yeah, that, that, that'd be fine. Thank you. No problem. We are the keepers of existence. We are many. That will be all, Lily. Now leave us. Yes, sir. Right away. Okay, as you replenish yourself, I will share our scripture with you in the story of our beginning. The Book of Salivar, Chapter 1 In the beginning, the council was formed. We lived in a society of constant need and people living above their means. So the Great Purge was a necessity. We were taught stories of Armageddon from religions of old. But in what they believed to be the end, we now understand as the true genesis, the true beginning. Our home was established to preserve faith. We were brought together to keep a belief of a higher calling alive. In our home, we held the hope that was to restore humanity. Our great leader, Pastor Gabriella Salivar, and the council that once governed us was set aside as martyrs that would bring forth the cleanse of Eden. When the outsiders came and chaos took away the council, and our geck was destroyed. We fled into the wilderness nearby, only to see the truth begin to manifest. In what we thought to be destruction, we began to see life. The beautiful mist began to spread across the land, and the vines would soon after grow, and the strangler heart would soon be born. To the outsider, this world would become the Maya, but to the believer, to the many that would understand truth, this place was the rebirth of the Garden of Eden. We thought in the beginning that peace meant nonviolence, but we understand now how naive nonviolence is. We cannot trust the outsider. We must purify the wilderness. If the outsider does not become the many, we must rebirth them into the strangler's heart. Our mission will see Eden grow. We will see the garden flourish. We are called to preserve the faith, and because of this, we are the keepers of existence. We are many. So, Brian from Omega, do you now understand? I'm gonna be honest. I didn't totally understand that. But what I do think I got from that is that when you open your vault doors, people from the outside killed your overseer? You were somewhat hearing correctly but no one killed our overseer. We, in fact, did not have an overseer. We had a council whose destiny were martyrs to bring forth the Garden of Eden. Okay. Again, if I'm being totally honest, I'm still a tad bit lost. When you go outside, take a look around you'll see the great vines. These vines are all connected to the strangler heart. The great strangler heart is only made strong by the ones that were martyred and the ones that we rebirth. This is why we are many. When we are martyred for the truth, we become one with the heart. And when someone comes along who cannot see the truth, we call them an outsider, and we rebirth them so they also can become the many. And those of us left awake who understand the truth 
are left as the keepers of existence. It is our job to feed the heart. But I, I still don't understand. What is the truth? <laughs> In that little question, I can see that you're starting to see a glimmer of the truth. You see, we believe, no, no, we know that the truth is Eden. The truth will see the spread of Eden. The truth will see the garden completed. So that's why the inside of that super duper mart looked like a mini version of the mire. Ah, so that's where they recovered you. The super duper mart in Morgantown. That is one of our first expansion zones. We have, through the great minds of some of our people, created a way to carry the Strangler Heart wherever we wish to go. And with this new, I guess, armor, you could call it, we can help the expansion of Eden. That old mart is only one of many places we have begun our expansions. Okay, okay. So the dots are starting to connect for me. But what were the cocoons I found in the store? The, the ones filled with all those dead mothmen? Yes, those are our way to see outsiders and abominations reborn into the heart. The cocoons are just holding the bodies for when the vines can spread and receive them as a part of the many. And the mothmen, well... They're just another abomination that will be rebirthed into Eden. Okay, so I think I'm starting to get it. You believe what happened to your vault is somehow an awakening and somehow a true faith as to how the world should be. And anyone who doesn't believe it, you kill and, well, you justify it by just saying it's a rebirthing or whatever. Careful, Brian from Omega. You are treading on soft ground. You are close to speaking in the language of an outsider. But I am an outsider. I don't believe in a reincarnated heart where we become many, as you've said. I, I don't believe what happened to your vault was somehow an awakening to a new faith or something that was intended all along. I think what happened to the people in your vault was a tragedy. I believe that the people that murdered them are bad, but it's still not a justification to murder someone or anyone that doesn't believe what you teach. I see a lot of bravery in you, but I don't see it as a heroic bravery. No, I see it as a stupid bravery. A sort of bravery that would see your current way of life come to an end. You don't seem to understand that no matter if you see the truth or not, we will all become one with Eden eventually. It's just on you to decide if it's through the glory of a martyr or through the pain of rebirth. Okay, I must calm down. I apologize. I understand that this is a lot for you, and it is why I must take some time to think about your future. I must pray to the Strangler Heart and see what Eden's decision is for you. So you mean whether to kill me or not? Oh, again with that primitive language. Do not fear, Brian from Omega. You will not be a captive in a cage. You will not be bound by ropes. While I cannot permit you to leave at this moment, you are still seen as an honored guest within our camp. Take your time, meet our people, and see if your eyes begin to see the truth. Hiya, mister. Did you like the lemonade? I made it myself. Used a recipe that my mom used to have. 
I really like lemonade. It's my favorite. So, did you like it? Huh? Did you? Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it was good. Um, very sweet and <laughs> um, tasty. Well, I'm glad. I love when I get to see new people taste it. Making lemonade is one of my favorite things to do. Well, that and singing, but I don't really know that many songs. Do you like to sing, mister? Uh, you don't have to call me mister. You, you can call me Brian. Well, Mr. Brian, do you like to sing? Um, yeah. I, I don't mind singing. I like to sing along with the songs that come on the radio. My daddy doesn't really let me listen to it that much, though. He says the radio is just there to guide us away from the truth. So, your name is Lily, right? And, and that guy Bishop, he's your dad? Yep, sure is. Daddy says a lily was the prettiest flower in all the world. And it was my mommy's favorite flower, too. And my mommy named me Lily because I'm special. It makes me the last lily on the whole earth. Well, um, Lily, it's, it's very nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too, Mr. Brian. I think my daddy wants me to show you around our camp and where you'll be sleeping. Oh, um, uh, okay. Um, well, you lead the way. Okay, Mr. Brian. Follow me right this way. So you've already seen where me and my daddy live, so let's head over to the prayer tree. Way up high in this tree is a whole bunch of big red vines. Daddy says that those vines are what gives us a real connection to the Garden of Eden. He says when he prays, those vines take his prayers to the great strangler heart. Oh, wow. That's a huge tree. That treehouse goes way up there. Uh-huh, but I'm not allowed to go up there. Daddy says he's the only one that really understands what the vines say. He said that one day he'll teach me how to hear the vines and what the strangler heart wants. Daddy doesn't like it when anything interrupts his prayer time. He's up there praying right now, so it's probably a good idea if I show you some more of the camp. Um, okay, yeah. I wouldn't want to do anything to upset your dad. Let's head to one of my favorite places. We call it the Song Circle. This is the Song Circle. We come here when Daddy wants to read the style of our scriptures, and we come here a lot when we sing songs to the garden. Oh, wow. That's, that's a really nice guitar. That's, that's one of those well-tuned guitars. You know, I used to take lessons when I was your age, but I only learned to play one song. It was a lullaby that my mom used to sing to me. Oh, I just love music, and I love to hear new songs. Please, 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 would you sing it for me? I would love to hear it if you don't mind. Oh, I, ha I haven't played in forever. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. But please, don't judge me too much. It's been a long time since I've even picked up a guitar. Yay! Thank you, thank you. Oh, I'm so excited. It 
doesn't matter what sky you're under you'll always be home always be home say Such a pretty song. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, um, my mom used to sing it to me when I was little. Does your mommy still sing it to you? No. I actually don't know where she is. We got separated about 26 years ago, so I really don't even know if she's still alive. I don't have my mommy anymore either. Daddy said she became a part of the Garden of Eden right when I was born. I have a picture of her, though. She was really beautiful. You look a lot like her, Lily. I do get sad that I can't talk to her or ever got to see her face for real. But Daddy says Mommy is still here. She is around me in this land and all the pretty flowers. He said every time I see the big vines move, that's just my Mommy showing me that she's here. Yeah, I think I know how you feel. I miss talking to my mom. I did get sort of a good feeling when I found this tape, and the, the tape had her voice on it. You can hear your mommy's voice? I've never heard my mommy before. What did the tape say? Well, I don't really have the full tape recording because, well, the tape was so busted when I found it. But I'm pretty sure it was recorded for me, and it was actually recorded six years, well, after the bombs fell. Bombs? Oh, yeah. Daddy says that's called the Great Pudge. Padge? Uh, purse? Purge? Well, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so when the bombs fell, or purge, um, that's when I got separated from my mom. And like I said, the tape I found was recorded for me to find. And because it was recorded six years after we separated, it makes me think that she's still out there. You mean your mommy is probably still around somewhere? Yeah. I was actually headed to recover a clue that would lead me to her, but then I ran into some of your people and, well, they brought me here. Oh, no. That's sad. I mean, I'm so glad you're here, but it makes me sad that you didn't get to find your clue. Um... What is a clue? <laughs> um, a clue is something that helps lead you to what you're looking for. Okay, think of it like this. Do you have any toys that you have that may go missing or get lost? Yeah, I have a blue Mr. Fuzzy toy that has a hole in his side. Oh, okay, yeah, perfect. Um, so just think if your Mr. Fuzzy went missing and... You saw some of the stuffing that's inside it lying all over the ground. Well, that stuffing would be a clue that might help you find your Mr. Fuzzy. Well, what is your clue? It's uh, less of a what is my clue and more of a well, who is my clue. So the parts that I can hear on the tape my mom left says there's a robot waiting for me where she used to work. And inside the robot could be more clues on how to find her. I don't know. So you weren't able to find the robot or what was inside it? Nope. I actually never even got to look for it. I got knocked off course when I got brought here. Well, aren't you going to go and find your clue? <laughs> I would love to, Lily, but I really don't think your dad or any of those guards over there are going to be letting me leave anytime soon. Well, I'm sure my daddy will let you leave. 
At least I hope he lets you find your mommy. <laughs> I'm not so sure, kid. See, me and your daddy don't see eye to eye on a lot of things, so... Really don't think he'll let me go for just any reason. Well, if I had a chance to talk to my mommy, I know my daddy would let me go. I think when he finds out it's to see your mommy, he will. But we won't know until he gets done with prayer time. So until then, let me show you where you will sleep. It's a really nice tent. I'll come bring you food later for supper, and maybe you can teach me that song your mommy would sing. <laughs> okay, kid. Sounds like a plan. Mr. Brian! Mr. Brian! Wake up! <sighs> wake up, mister! <sighs> oh, uh, Lily, uh, um, okay. Why are you pointing that gun at me? Oh, <laughs> sorry. This is your gun and your bag. I got it from my daddy's tent. Wait, what? <sighs> what time is it? Why on earth did you grab all my things? Well, I was cleaning up when I heard a man's voice speaking inside your backpack. So I opened it, and a little radio was in it, and a man with a real growly voice was saying your name. Oh, that must have been Carl. If I've been missing for as many days as your dad said, then... He is probably looking for me. Is my walkie still in this bag? Walkie? Walkie? Oh, um, sorry. Uh, yeah, that, that little radio with the man's voice. Well, um, when I found the radio, my dad came into the tent. He didn't like me going through your stuff, and when he heard the man's voice too, he smashed the radio. <sighs> no. <sighs> That's my only way to communicate back to Omega. Omega? Yeah. Um, Omega's my home, and that walkie, I mean, radio was the only way for me to stay in contact with the people that live at my home. Well, when Daddy smashed the radio, he got really mad. But I tried to make him happy by telling him you're looking for your mommy. But that made him even more mad. And he told me to stop talking to you and to stay away from you. He said you were telling me a fib and that you don't have a mommy. <sighs> Lily, why are you here with my stuff? Well, I love my Daddy, and I trust in the scriptures he teaches me. But that song you sang, it really made me feel happy. Like my own mommy was singing to me. So I don't think you're fibbing to me. I think my daddy just doesn't know you yet. I think if I had a chance to see my mommy for real, instead of just a picture or the pretty flowers, I would do anything to see her. Okay. So, what are you saying? Well, Mr. Brian, I'm going to help you leave. Help me leave? How, how can you do that? My daddy is asleep right now, and Mr. Joe that was guarding your tent is also asleep outside. So I sneaked your stuff here, and I can show you a way out of our camp. But Lily, won't you get in trouble? Not if they think you ran away. I've seen a lot of people run away from here. Most of them get brought back here for a rebirth ceremony, but some never come back. So if I help you leave, maybe they'll think you got away. Uh, this doesn't sound very promising. Hush, silly. Just grab your stuff and follow me. Okay, Mr. Brian. This should be far enough away. You see that road over there? If you take that road... It should lead you out far enough to find where you need to go. Lily, kid, thank you so much. I really don't know how I could ever repay you. Are you sure you're not going to get into any trouble? Oh, Mr. Brian, don't worry about me. Like I said, it'll look like you just ran off. Daddy won't be happy, but it's okay. 
Here, I've got something for you. Take this. What's this? Grognak the Barbarian and the Jungle of the Bat Babies? <laughs> Sounds silly. <laughs> no, no, no. It's really good. It's a comic book. It's filled with adventure, and there's actually a lady in there that, well, she reminds me a lot of you. She's very brave. I think you'll really like it. It was my favorite. Thank you. I love it. I really hope you find your mommy. It'll be good if you do. Yeah, it will. Listen, it was really great to meet you, Miss Lily. You too, Mr. Brian. Maybe we'll see each other again one day. Maybe. Maybe we will. See you around, kid. Good morning, Brian from... Oh, that sneaky son of a bitch. He's gone. Joseph, enter this tent immediately. I must have words with you. Yes, sir. What seems to be the matter? Take a look around, young Joseph. Do you seriously not notice anything out of the ordinary? Well, now... The prisoner's gone missing. Firstly, he was an honored guest. And secondly, how could he be missing? Um, well, sir, I might have fallen asleep last night. But it wasn't my fault, sir. I've been up for days working alongside the new converts on the garden expansion, and I succumbed to my weariness. Now listen here, you old worthless bag of bones. One thing that I must have within my ranks is order. When there is no order, there is only chaos. And as a second priest, you should know and understand that the garden cannot thrive when there is chaos. So please, please, please don't stand there and say it was not your fault. We must all take responsibility for the things that happen within our care. Yes, sir. Uh, I understand, and I apologize. I take full responsibility for the... Oh, dear. How I do hate chaos. Missionaries, children of Eden, please gather round. We have had a valued guest go missing once again. I need the ones set aside as ambassadors to go forth into the communities all throughout this land and seek the one called Brian Burton from Omega. We also know the location of his settlement as he has encoded the coordinates within every broadcast. So you do as you must. Make yourselves blend within those communities. And when you find him, bring him to me. We never finished our conversation. your eyes and rest your mind let this song be enough come what may blue skies or gray you'll always be loved you'll always be loved 
your slumber And I was there all along It doesn't matter What sky you're under You'll always be home You'll always be home Safe in my arms That's where you belong That's where you belong of the Omega Broadcast, A Fallout Story. I just wanted to take a moment real quick and just say thank you so much for checking out this podcast. I really hope you enjoy listening to these stories just as much as I enjoy making them. If you do enjoy this podcast, please let me know by liking, sharing, and even through your comments. Thank you again so much for your support. Remember, there's a place for you at the end. Omega. Omega.